counter-terrorism expert Jonathan Fiennes joining us on the line from Jerusalem. Jonathan, hi there, thanks for your time. I mean, very shortly after all this happened... Hi, good evening to all of you. Hi there. Very shortly after this happened, the accusation was, you know, maybe the uh, French uh, security authorities, the police dropped the ball here in allowing this to happen because these terrorists were uh, known, but they'd been under less surveillance, less suspicion for the last six months. I mean, is that a fair... Uh, accusation to make. Uh, how can you clamp down, as we've been saying for days here, how can you clamp down on everyone 100% of the time? Or well, should you well first of all, the answer is very simple. Yeah, the, the, answer, the answer is simple. You can't. Uh, there's no doubt that the uh, uh, Karachi brothers and Ahmedi, the guy that uh, targeted uh, the uh, kosher uh, supermarket, were on the list. Uh, we're on the list of not entering the United States. Uh, Sharif, uh, one of the brothers, was trained in Yemen. The younger brother wanted to go and fight in Iraq. Um, the, one of the guys in that report saying, as he saw it, the problem was a clash of civilizations. Do you agree? Well, uh, in many aspects, yes. I think that the major challenge uh, Western Europe has, it's not only Western Europe, it's a global problem of defining the problem. And the problem is radical Sunni Islam and its violent manifestation with a very uh, a clear setup of a basis of origin, history, and specific terrorist organizations that are executing and translating this ideology into, uh, into action. Uh, if you do, if you, for example, look at how the uh, most of the British and French networks uh, uh, were defining the enemy in the past few days, uh, most of the terminology never mentioned the word terror of Islam. They were talking about militants, activists, combatants, radicals. French president talked about barbarians, but that doesn't really say anything. We are talking about a very specific way of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, translating and uh, uh, manifesting Islam, and that is radical Sunni and radical Shiite Islam. This is not an amorphic terminology. We know exactly who is doing this. Uh, and it goes back to the history of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood and scholars like Hassan al-Banna, Said Qutb, Abdallah Yusuf Azam, Sheikh Yusuf Kardawi. And of course, today we got the problem with organizations like so Al-Qaeda, uh, to to uh, IS. So how can you counter it to make Europe a safer place then? To, to, or can you not uh, effectively uh, rule out this I'll, happening I'll, again? I'll give you a very simple... I'll give you a very simple and very hard answer. The Europeans have two hard choices to make. And the truth is, it's not only Europe, it's China, it's Russia, it's Europe, it's Israel, it's the United States, and it's also Latin America. In the end of the day, you have to decide, do we want to wage war in their countries of origin, meaning Africa, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, the Levant, or we want to battle them in the Trafalgar Square, the Red Square, the Tiananmen Square, or Place de la Concorde, or any other place around Europe and the Western Hemisphere. This is the hard choice that the West and all those who suffered from terrorism, which So you're saying which this Western policy gone Russian wrong and, 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 and the West has brought it on itself? Uh, in, some, uh, in, in some aspects, yes, because I think that uh, many people in the West are running away from the problem. It's like a little kid uh, hiding in a tent with a flashlight in a dark room and says that there is light around them. If the Europe doesn't define the problem as radical Sunni Islam, and with all due respect to President Obama and President Rolland, yes, there is Islamic terror, and we have to name it as it is. If they don't do that, they'll never win this. Mm. And this is a very hard choice to make because it's not, it doesn't only uh, finish with the terrorist itself. There is a huge problem of Islamic immigration to Europe, which the Europeans have brought upon themselves. Now, it's true that a lot of these Muslims are not terrorists. They're not members in these organizations. Absolutely, Some of and them they're are horrified by what Some they've witnessed here, and they're worried about reprisal attacks now. Of course, and rightfully so. Of course they are. But you, just, but, but, but you just can't go out with slogans like we saw yesterday in a demonstration, uh, such as multiculturalism and integration, when in fact, if you visit uh, uh, European cities, and these are two examples, uh, like Bradford in England or Malmo in Sweden, if that is multiculturalism and uh, uh, integration, I can tell you that as an Israeli Zionist Jew, I have much more integration and culture, multiculturalism with Gaza than the average Swede or the average Britain has with local Muslims in Europe today. So this where, is how bad the Where did this start is. going wrong then? Uh, Multiculturalism is painted as a, 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 as a very positive thing within Europe. Where do you think it started to go wrong? 
It, it is. It's a beautiful thing. The, the, the question is if it's realistic or not, because uh, part of the Muslim population in Europe simply doesn't want to integrate. On the other hand, a lot of Europeans don't want them to integrate. It's a very complicated problem. I think that it started with the fact that the Europeans, when they absorb thousands or millions of Muslim immigrants from Pakistan, for example, but from, many uh, are, of course, from generations Africa, in there. So what do any, you do? Uh, they call themselves British. They the call third themselves generation Swedish. is a lost generation. Uh, the, the problem is that uh, the young generation, the major problem is not with the parents, but with the second, third generation. Although physically, for example, born in Britain or in France, they do not perceive themselves neither as Britons or as French. They're totally disconnected from their surrounding. They have not integrated into European society. The Europeans also have to bear the fault and the blame of not exercising, I would say, a pragmatic absorption policy. This is the reality of the situation now. Now, I, you don't have to put all the Muslim population in one basket, but the more moderate Muslims in Europe today have to make a very, very clear stand where they are. How do they relate to all this, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not enough just to say that we're not terrorists and then smile and say that, wow, it's good that the French and the British and the Jews uh, are beaten from time to time. Because so what's going to give here? What's your prognosis? Or God knows what. Well, my prognosis is that things are going to get much worse before they're going to get any better. I am not completely convinced, despite the demonstration yesterday, that uh, Western Europe has internalized the clear definition of who the enemy is and what should be done. And as I said before, they got two very hard choices. Either the battle will be relocated to Africa, the Middle East, uh, where most of these groups have originated from, and that's where their major bases are, or the battle will, will be waged in the streets of Paris, Berlin, and London. These are the two cho choices they have to make when it comes to counterterrorism. And, and, and I'm sorry that I'm not optimistic about this. Uh, there are hundreds of sleeping cells today in uh, England, in Germany, in, uh, um, uh, in France. Talk to, the, uh, talk to their intelligence community and you'll mm. see how scared most of, the, mo mo most of them are. We haven't seen yet the uh, Islamic State uh, uh, operational, modus operandi, which they promised to bring over to Europe. And uh, if they don't have a very clear definition who they're up against, it's going to be a very, very, very long bloody uh, campaign. Jonathan, we've got to leave it there. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, pretty bleak uh, outlook you're painting too. Counterterrorism expert Jonathan Sorry Fine that I can't have any on the line news. from Jerusalem. All best to you, sir. Thanks for being with us.